In this short video, we are introducing you to your new online learning platform called Canvas. You will access Canvas through the student portal at my.brooklinecollege.edu. When you first log into Canvas, you will land on your dashboard page. On the left navigation, you'll notice there is an account area where you can set up text notifications for due dates or grades being turned in. And you'll also notice that you'll have the ability to update your profile picture. A few other things to note in the dashboard menu is the dashboard button. If you click on the dashboard button, it's just going to take you back to the page that we see right now, which is where your courses are listed, along with a to-do list on the far right-hand side. The next thing in your menu is the courses menu. That is a quick way for you to navigate in between courses. So if you're in one and you want to quickly jump into another, you can use that button. The other thing found in the dashboard navigation is the calendar feature. And this is a listing of all due dates for your current classes. So if you are in multiple classes, you may see both class due dates at the same time. The other thing that you'll notice in the dashboard navigation is the inbox where you can communicate with your instructors about your courses. There is a history button that will show you different pages that you visited, and then a help button where you can chat with Canvas student support, you can call the Canvas support hotline, and even ask your instructor a question right from this menu. So let's take a look at one of our classes. I'm going to click back on dashboard to get us started, and then I'm going to select a class. You should have a class posted in here by the first day of class. It may even appear a little bit earlier for you to take a look at, but let's go in and see what is in this class. I have changed us to student view so we can see what you would see. When you first go into a classroom, you'll notice that there is still that left-hand navigation bar, but then there is another navigation bar next to it, and that is your classroom navigation bar. We are on the syllabus page, but interestingly, we're also on the home page. They are the same. When you are on the Homer syllabus page, your next step really is to just read through this page. You want to read all of the recent announcements, and in here you'll notice your instructor information. Once we've taken a look at that, we can actually navigate using our back button, and you'll notice that the little blue dot is gone. That means I read that announcement. There are up to five announcements that will appear on this page. But if you wanted to look for an older announcement in class, you'll simply click on the Announcements button in your course navigation. That page has all announcements ever provided in that particular course. The next thing that we want to do is scroll down the page because we want to know when our class is going to meet. This particular class meets on Mondays at 9 a.m. for the entire course, and the first meeting is held on February 15th. The last meeting is held on March 15th. Then I can see the start and end times. I also have my instructor name again, and then right below that, a link to click on in order to join the meeting. I want to scroll up just a little bit and have you look over on the right-hand side, and you'll notice that there is a series of buttons, and there is also a calendar. That is where your to-do list items will appear based on where you are in the course. Now let's scroll back down and take a look at a few other things. Under Start Here is a welcome message to help you get started in your class. And in the classroom, there are some tips that are provided on what you are suggested to do. So you want to make sure to read your welcome. You also want to read the note about online learning or virtual learning. In this class example, the class is offered 100% online and you participate and attend class by completing gradable activities, such as discussion boards, writing assignments, quizzes, assessments, and other items. If you are in a ground-based course that is virtual, there will be a different note. In this example that I'm showing on the screen, the course is actually offered as a blended course, which means some of the segments are offered online and some are offered on ground. Be sure to read these notes as they will dictate how to best participate in your class. If I scroll down a little bit more, you'll notice there is a purpose and structure statement, and then there are minimum technology requirements, such as high-speed internet, 
desktop or laptop computer, webcam, and Google Chrome or Firefox browser. Once you've read all of this, you can click on week one, this red button here, but I want you to note that there is a copy of the syllabus down below, and we will also see that in a moment in the syllabus quiz module, which we'll take a look at. But just know that that is here, and then there are a series of due dates that will be listed at the bottom of this first page. So we can click here to start week one, or we can actually use the modules button. I'm going to use modules in this case just because I'm back up here. And this will actually take you directly to the introduction module. In the introduction module, this is very similar to Moodle in that it contains an instructor welcome, your live lectures, you have student resources here, you have APA format resources and ebook resources. The clickable items here tend to have an icon beside them. In my example that I'm clicking on, this is my instructor welcome, and you can see that I've provided again my name, phone number, and email, office hours, but I've added a picture and I also have a video that I can open to full Great size. Team. Once I've reviewed that instructor welcome video, I can go right back to modules or I can hit my back button. Either way, I can get there. And then I can look at the live lectures and recordings link as well. This is also very similar to Moodle in that this is the live lecture meeting button. It's just like the meeting button on our first page or link on our first page to get to your meetings. The key thing here is that your recordings are all posted here. Once we've reviewed that, again, we can click on modules or our back button and we can continue to navigate through this content. The next really important thing that I want to draw to your attention is student resources because that is where we have a variety of contact information for you. As I scroll down, there is a catalog and handbook link. There is a technical support link. There are uh, links to the Canvas help community. There is the Brookline Library resources and student services. I want to draw your attention to the student services resources. These are the same resources that were available in Moodle in your top navigation bar. It is a little bit hidden, so I wanna make sure you are aware. This is where you can find financial aid email addresses and the phone number, and then email addresses and phone numbers for each of our student service advisors and access to our online librarian. Once you've reviewed this information, again, you can hit your back button or hit modules. And then from here, I want to just point out that we still have APA format resources, such as our APA paper template. You'll have a link to your ebook resources where you can click on the link to create your account, whether it's with Cengage or Vital Source or McGraw Hill or any of our other resources, they will be listed there. And then if you're new to using Microsoft Word, and a lot of students use this to write, you'll notice that there is a, a series of tutorial videos available also in that area for you. Now, now that we've reviewed all of that, we know that that stuff is there. Oops, let me just go ahead and get us back to modules. I clicked a button I shouldn't have, here we go. Um, we are going to then notice that there is a syllabus quiz. Now we know that that syllabus was available on the first page, but it's also available here and can be downloaded. You'll notice the Zoom features here. And then once you've read through this, you can either hit modules or you can hit your back button to go back to where we were. Okay, so let's go back down here. And we, once we've reviewed the syllabus, we do our syllabus quiz. Okay, and it's really simple. You'll click on take the quiz. You will answer the questions. Okay, and then you'll just simply hit the submit quiz button. What you'll notice on the far right-hand side is that this took me less than a minute, gives me my score. This particular quiz has unlimited attempts. I can take it again, but this is very similar to how your quizzes will work as well. Unless they are in one of your book resources like MindTap or McGraw-Hill, then you'll go through there. But this is what the quiz process looks like that is built in Canvas. Now, again, we can hit our back button or go to modules. And what we'll be doing next is we'll actually go into week one and take a look at what is there. Okay, so I hit my back button. That was a little bit of a long way to go, but um, in a MindTap class, you will see additional textbook resources. Uh, and because this is a MindTap class, that is what we're seeing.
And now where we are is we are in modules. So let me scroll up and show you. We've simply just come down past the introduction module, the syllabus quiz and textbook modules, and we are officially in week one where our work appears. From here, you will notice that there is an introduction forum, and that is a discussion board where you can introduce yourself to other students. And this format is the same for all discussion boards. You'll simply click on reply and you can enter in a question, comment, or turn in your discussion assignment. It's very similar. Forums and discussion boards are um, alike in terms of how you use them. Once I have written a post to the introduction forum, I simply click on the post reply link, and then you can see my message is posted to the, that introduction forum. Now I can hit my back button or I can go back to modules to navigate to the next thing that I need to do. Back in week one, I see that I have two chapters to read and then I have two PowerPoint chapters to review. I also notice that I have a discussion assignment due by Wednesday. And again, just as we said, if you click on the discussion assignment and begin to work through the discussion assignment itself, I'm gonna scroll down here. When I hit reply, I get that same reply menu. I can type in my response. And then what you'll notice here is I have a sample response already posted and a few other po posts that are responded to that one have come through. So that is what the discussion page looks like. Now back on modules, I'm going to go back down to my week one work and I have a writing assignment to turn in. So I'll click on the writing assignment page There'll be a message about what the due date is, the points, what type of file I need to submit, and then the assignment details underneath. And when I'm ready to submit, I can simply click on Submit Assignment. And if I scroll down a little bit, you'll notice that I get a file upload menu, and I can choose a file and upload that. Let's find my file. There it is, perfect, alrighty. So once we are done uploading our file, we can click on Submit Assignment. And then you'll notice that in the upper right corner, it lets me know that I have submitted this on January 26th. And there's the ability for me to download a copy of the paper. And then if I need to resubmit the paper for any reason, my instructor requests me to do so, um, I can actually click on this Resubmit button and then I'll be presented with that file upload option again. And it's that simple. Once that is turned in, we can then navigate again back to modules. Okay, we'll get navigated back down to week one. And then in this class, we have in textbook assignments. And so what we would do is we would click on any one of these to begin. Now I'm going to use um, an example of what that would look like. I'll click on the link and then we can see that the content is loading. And so you notice it behaves exactly like it did when we were in Moodle. You can simply click through your assignments right here, and you can read the book by clicking on the book on the right-hand side and navigating that book through the table of contents or clicking the arrow. And again, this is a Cengage class. It's specific to Cengage but our other book publishers work very similarly. Now that we've looked at the various types of assignments that you would be doing in class, you are ready to get started. We are sending out invitations for you all to attend training sessions the week of February 1st. And so we look forward to seeing you there to provide additional detail and make sure that you can get logged in. But from all of us here at Brookline, thank you so much for checking out our video, and we look forward to seeing you in Canvas. Have a wonderful day.